All right. So we are recording. Um, so welcome to Startup Grind. My name is Dan Young. I'm the director of the doctoral program in business at Goldie Beacom College. Uh, and today we have Candice Caruso from Wispus Bank. Um, Candice, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to share. Excellent. Um, so Startup Grind basically is a an international a collection of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who are always looking for best practices. And when I when I found out a little bit about what you do for a living, I wanted to try to share some of those learnings with our audience. So kind of first and foremost, can you just tell us a little bit about your story? You know, what's your background? Sure. I would say that I probably don't have exactly the typical background of uh, most bankers, but um, I think it gives me a unique perspective. So uh, my professional career for the last 20 years has been focused in financial service and always has been catering to small business owners. I actually started my career very young, um, working for a actuarial firm focused on pensions and qualified plans, and then later diversified into serving small businesses in funding solutions. And that included both uh, traditional you know, businesses in the sense of acquisitions and things like that, retails. Uh, businesses, but also a specialty in franchising and business startup. Um, with that, uh, you know, SBA financing was a critical tool with many of the, the types of businesses that I served as I pivoted into the funding space. And that's what really brought me to Wispus Bank. And currently, I'm the director of government guaranteed lending here at Wispus Bank. We focus in regular times on 7A lending, and I'm you know, happy to explain what that is relative to SBA if someone had questions. But um, kind of what gives me a unique perspective is that I grew up in a small business. So I grew up in a family business, and as a young girl, I was working trade shows with my family. I was um, you know, in my family's uh, business where they uh, had manufactured hair curlers and things like that. And uh, we also had a salon that also had an upscale dress shop where I would interact with customers. And it really gave me a different point of view as it relates to starting a business, growing a business, um, really understanding what it takes. So, you know, I had my grandfather as a, a key um, mentor. He was an inventor, a creator, the, probably one of the most hardworking people I've ever met. Um, and he was very resilient and tough, and it allowed him to be successful, but he was also partnered with my grandmother, who was really a financial guru. I learned from my mom how to build relationships with people, as she was a talented stylist. My aunt was a, a gifted spokeswoman, and my father was uh, really talented and insightful when it came to contract negotiation. So I really leveraged that experience, that personal experience in my professional career, and it's given me a close connection in working with startups and small businesses and even established businesses and understanding the, the roller coaster of business ownership. Roller coaster, not just from an emotional standpoint, but the peaks and valleys that you might experience, not just in COVID times, but in regular times, and particularly with the speed of change today. That's that's really interesting because I did I wasn't I didn't know about those different parts of your background. And you know, if you think about, you know, hair care and styling, you know, what what other profession is customer satisfaction um, more important than than that particular profession. So it's kind of clear where you got a lot of your talents from and just dealing with people right right there. Yeah, and really just um, knowing that, you know, everybody has a specialty. So knowing the business owner and what their specialty is and where they might need support or advisors around them to help them through certain aspects or, or growth points of their business as well. That makes sense. And so you parlayed some of those different learnings to, you know, launching a startup. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your past experience of, of, of launching a startup um, and how it allowed you to be successful launching PPP and leveraging your background in fintech? Absolutely. So I had the privilege of launching a fintech startup in 2014 called Pango Financial. It was located in Delaware and I um, had uh, some support from you know, some outside investors to begin that business. Um, that business, Pango Financial, was focused on franchise funding nationwide and really leveraged technology. So what that meant was that really it was a, a tool to match make um, SBA lenders, marketable securities loans, and also a platform to initiate a, a specialized program called Rollover of Business Startups. And essentially, all of those programs are very complicated. 
and something that may seem a bit overwhelming to a small business owner. So my goal was to focus on a client experience and something that could be accessible um, with the use of a, an online platform, as well as a, from an affordability standpoint, something that was affordable to a small business owner that they could leverage relative to funding their franchise or their small business. And um, Pango Financial continues to run, but I had a great opportunity right after having my daughter in 2018 to join Westfist Bank. And how I um, you know, interacted with Westfist Bank prior uh, had been through engagement within the community throughout the state of Delaware. And really um, there were some members at, within WISFIS that got to know me and saw me out at different SBA events and things of that sort. So I really developed that reputation. And what WISFIS Bank knew about me is that I was looking wherever I was uh, going to go to bring that entrepreneurial spirit. So they allowed me to really be an entrepreneur. And that's what enticed me to make the transition um, I, I was given the opportunity to run the Government Guaranteed Lending Division and have a focus on serving the small business customer that I've always been passionate about working with, but really be solutions focused. And when COVID-19 hit and PPP became a program that we really had to respond to overnight, um, really my, all of my entrepreneurial skills and agility that I learned from you know, launching a startup, building a startup, uh, around speed to implementation, again, having that agility to address all the required regulation, and even leveraging technology to originate these loans all became essential in order to meet the demands of our local community. That's great. Uh, now, I want to get into your work in, in WISFIS in a second, um, but just in the work that you did with Tango Financial, wh what are some of the experiences that you might be able to share about just you know, consulting with other startups and, and venture capital groups? Or is there any, any kind of experiences that you can share that you think would benefit um, a, uh, a, a population of entrepreneurs? So one thing I would encourage any entrepreneur is build a brand for your business and build a brand for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I had embedded myself and immersed myself in the local community, um, in startup hubs, industry organization, and really stayed focused on my customer. So that you really almost have to be obsessed um, you know, with your outcomes. So I really became obsessed on finding the most creative solutions to provide the best client experience at the most attractive pricing as it related to those funding options I had mentioned. Uh -huh. And with that, um, you know, individuals looked at me as a trusted advisor, as a trusted resource. They would make recommendations for where I should position myself to get greater visibility, uh, where customer opportunities might be. And what I would also share is know who are going to channel business to you. So one of the things that I had done um, in working with Pango is developing affiliate relationships. So whether that be uh, referral relationships with banks, franchisors, centers of influence, in my case, SBA district offices, business brokers, franchise brokers, funding partners. So all the things that are out there for my particular industry, but you have to find those relationships for you. And for any startup, developing relationships with venture capital firms and financial institutions are critically important relative to short and long term. But what I would share with you is that banks and venture capitalists have different risk appetites. Yeah. So knowing the different risk appetites for your audience and the way that they want to be presented to around the value of your business is critically important in order for uh, you to identify one, if they're the right funding partner for you at that stage of business, and two, if strategically this is the time for you to take on capital. And some of that are reflection points. It could be reflection points on type of business, maturity of your business, and of course, even your own per personal financial status at that time. That makes sense. That makes sense. And um, by the way, for the folks who are who are in the gallery, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q and A feature uh, at the bottom of the screen. Um, we'll make sure we read those off to Candace before uh, the end of our broadcast. Um, so, Candace, as you mentioned, um, you know SBA is a unique model, uh, and and Wisfis allowed you to launch this model within the bank um, under your expanded footprint and into the national franchise. Um, can you can you discuss a little bit more about what's it like to be an entrepreneur at Wisfus Bank um, and, and how Wisfus has allowed you to be an entrepreneur, in essence, in launching a business within a business? What are some of those uh, experiences that you've had there? 
Yeah, uh, I would say that Wistis Bank, um, as well as other large corporations, are looking for entrepreneurs. They're looking for people that are creative, that are going to be willing to take risks, calculated risks, of course. Um, they also bring expertise that maybe don't come from individuals that take more traditional paths to, you know, getting to uh, uh, division manager level positions, things of that sort. So really to have that diversity within a financial institution to allow for growth and also to support uh, Wistis Bank's uh, goal to not only grow the SBE division, but also their desire to implement uh, better delivery transformation, which ties to technology. Mm -hmm. So just in kind of, you know, working through both of those points, when WISTIS approached me, um, I have the transferable experience of working in the franchise space nationwide for many, many years. And so with that experience, I was able to educate them on the risk appetite, um, tools that are available to, you know, determine longevity of a franchise brand, things of that sort, which are critically important if you're going to grow, particularly outside your footprint. It also, the SBA gives us greater ability uh, to lend because we can look at younger businesses, we can look at businesses that have less historical cash flow. Um, of course, as I mentioned, franchise startups. Uh, in the sense of startups, we usually look for outside of franchises about 24 months of positive cash flow before we typically get comfortable, but there you know, could be some exceptions to that, but that's more commonplace. And we will look at guarantors and their need for enhancement around equity investment, uh, which is more or less your down payment for a business loan, as well as if there's limited collateral to pledge. So for all of you that may not be familiar with SBA lending, it essentially is a guarantee that is a credit enhancement for banks to offer loans to businesses that otherwise do not meet their conventional lending appetite. And I was able to really kind of converge my experience around technology, franchise lending, SBA lending, and uh, impart that on the team here at Wistvis Bank, uh, SBA you know, lending team, as well as grow that team. So with all of those things coming together, it was really an ideal opportunity for me. And also um, given that it allowed me to stay closer to home, you know, being focused in Delaware, as well as you know, Pennsylvania, and then you know, more recently growing into even New Jersey with the beneficial acquisition. Excellent, excellent. So in your role, can you talk about some maybe of the, uh, the trends in entrepreneurship that you see in the state of Delaware in the local region? Um, you know, obviously that you have information on who's reaching out to you um, for assistance. Have, have you seen things uh, since you took the role in, in 2018? Um, and obviously there's a small thing called COVID that happened as well. Uh, have, you, have you seen some interesting trends in terms of the entrepreneurs that are approaching you um, for, for funding? For help. Well, I would say that I do see trends in the state of Delaware, not necessarily just associated with uh, businesses that are approaching us for funding. Okay. So outside of COVID, I know that Delaware has had some uh, fintech focus. They've had a, a desire to leverage some of the individuals that came out of DuPont that were scientists. So there's been lots of initiatives within the state of Delaware to really preserve that talent and to allow them to incubate and grow within the state. So I believe that some of those opportunities could become our customers in time. However, um, my interaction with those centers of influence within the state, um, you know, I would say, you know, they're more early stage or there are grant programs that have supported them to this point, but I do look at that as a long-term opportunity in the state of Delaware. I would share that within Wistis Bank, we've, we've seen a diversified um, a base of all different kinds of businesses approach us for funding. Some could be in the, the world of franchise startups. So whether that be, you know, a yoga studio or a restaurant or um, a daycare facility, things of that sort, we certainly get those. We also get acquisition opportunities. So let's say you have someone that is buying an existing business, but maybe they're, they have great experience, but they're a younger entrepreneur or an entrepreneur that hasn't been able to build up as much financial resources to qualify for a conventional loan. SBA financing can be important. Uh, we've also had some innovative businesses. Um, one of our customers, uh, D150, we recently did an article on that is in the state of Delaware, very young business, organically grown. It's truly a startup that we've supported. 
and they do um, they basically provide gasoline services to truckers and other distribution and logistics firms, and they do it overnight. So a really kind of innovative business based in Delaware that we've supported just as an example and spotlighted. We always like to celebrate our customers, so we try to share that out there as well. Um, what I would encourage uh, all of you to do is just familiarize yourself with not just the PPP loans if you're eligible, but also the SBA right now is uh, offering some additional programs at, based out of the recent government stimulus that is allowing for some additional interest around SBA financing. Part of that is due to the fact that the SBA is waiving the guarantee fee. So this is up until September 30th of 2021. So that's a tremendous savings for individuals that need to leverage SBA financing as their tool or mechanism to either grow or start a business. Um, also, there is a payment subsidy that the SBA is offering for the first three months for eligible businesses as long as funds remain available. And um, for on the banking side, the SBA is providing a 90% guarantee to encourage lenders to lend. So inclusive of WISIS Bank as well as any SBA lender, these programs are out there and are intended to help support the economy in rebounding from COVID-19 so that small business owners know that the government is there to support them as they return to you know, being fully open. Um, what I would share too is from a banking perspective, we still need to do our due diligence. So you may get additional questions if you pursue an SBA loan or frankly, any type of business loan where we're gonna need some information around your response to COVID-19, whether that relates to projections, whether that relates to COVID-19 health concerns, just to make sure that we understand the health of the business today, not just how it was historically positioned. That makes sense. And thank, and thank you for that. And thank you for those uh, additional pieces of information. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be looking those up myself for <laughs> some, of the, some, of the things that, some of the things that I'm working on. And I know even with the SBA, um, as the president of Theater N, uh, where we have a shuttered venues um, application due, I think in two days. So, uh, so that's, that's very timely. Um, oftentimes within Startup Grind, we, we have our speakers, you know, put up a, a challenge for the audience to do. So in, a, in an audience full of entrepreneurs, um, is there any, is there, are there any directives or some challenges you would say, you know, especially when dealing with a ban bank like Wisfis, you know, go out and do this in the next day or two, the next week or two, or the next month or two, any challenges you'd like to put forth to the audience? You know, I think that's a tremendous question. I would probably say that, um, really have a disruption mindset. So what, what is the risk of the future? What, what are your short and long-term you know, value offerings to customers? How are you delivering on that? How are you attracting new customers and retaining existing customers? But how can you do that in a different or unique way? And keep in mind that everything is moving so quickly as well as uh, the, the globalization piece. So you know, look in your backyard if it's appropriate for your business, if you're a retail-based business, um, that may be relevant, but it may also be relevant to look at those uh, competitive disruptors out there that, you know, substitutions or, um, you know, the large uh, giants like Amazon and such of the world and how they impact your business. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's a great, that's great feedback. Um, for, for the folks who are also on the line, um, this will be my last question. So if you have any sort of Q&A, please let us know, put it in the box there. Um, and because we as entrepreneurs and, and you as a, you know, a former entrepreneur, current entrepreneur, uh, we are truly all in this together, uh, especially here in the state of Delaware, as we try to put together our, a cohesive, uh, uh, cohesive entrepreneurial ecosystem. What can the startup grind community do for you, you know, and or with this bank? What are some of the ways that we can support your efforts, um, make your job uh, easier, better, more, more fun? Um, more profitable? What are, what are things that we can do for you? Well, this is, this is a great way to share. And I view this as a, you know, a fun opportunity. So certainly anytime there's an opportunity to share and give back to other small businesses or to help present resources to them, I'm, I'm always uh, excited and interested to do so. What I would share focused on my business at Wistis Bank, so this, the SBA, and more so focused on the 7A financing, which is you know, more for working capital or real estate purchases, things of that sort. 
Um, I would encourage the startup grind community to introduce business owners, you know, to myself or to my team that have 24 months of historical success, have a strategy of execution in supporting a business plan. Uh, they also cash flow. So SBA loans are cash flow loans. So we really take a hard look at cash flow. And, and in these times with the disruption of COVID projections, um, we are, although looking at national franchise opportunities, we're selective in that space. Our primary footprint, of course, is our home state, the state of Delaware, um, Pennsylvania. So uh, the SBA team can actually stretch throughout the entire state of, of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Virginia, and Maryland. Uh -huh. And I would also just share um, that it is important to keep in mind if you are pursuing SBA financing, the timeliness of the stimulus and that that is only available till September. So after that point, the guarantee fees will come back into play unless there is additional legislation that would extend that time frame, and there are budgetary constraints. Um, broader outside of my department, you know, Wispus Bank is really a, a bank that is committed to the business community, small and large business. So if you have any deposit needs, cash management needs, merchant services, or um, you know, anything else uh, outside of that relative to your banking relationship, you know, we certainly are there to serve. And that is something that WISFIS is you know, present throughout the state of Delaware, are very accessible, but also really um, taking an interest in making sure that our local communities survive through the needs of PPP and COVID-19, but thrive on the other side of things. And, and as you know, part of the reason why we're here today is that WISFIS is my bank. So I, I definitely uh, would echo that. And I, and I remember the days where WISFIS was, was you know, one of Delaware's smaller banks and now lo and behold, uh, obviously making, making huge inroads. And actually, I'm gonna ask you one additional question to something that you mentioned before. Would you, would you say that in terms of your role, um, with, with PPP and SBA, that WISFIS has some level of a, uh, a sweet spot of business. You mentioned kind of the 24 months of, of ongoing cash flow. Um, do you feel as though you're in a position to help maybe businesses that are a little bit bigger than others? Because I, you know, I'm sure I could have a home-based one-person business that has, uh, you know, $3,000 per month of cash flow. And I could say, hey, listen, look, it's going up by 5% per, per year here. Um, but would you say that there's kind of a sweet spot that, that you look at and you can say, hey, we can definitely put these people in a good position to grow? What I would share is we would, when a customer comes to us, we would assess for them the right solution, the right funding mm -hmm. solution based on their need and based on the maturity of their business. Okay. Now for my team on the government guaranteed lending side, we're looking for 24 months, but if you're under that point, we might look at personal lending solutions to help you through. So it could be a home equity line, it could be a line of credit, things of that sort um, that may help you kind of get going into business. We also have our small business team, um, which has a slew of other funding solutions that um, go up to a million dollars. Um, that they can offer to you. My department, most of our loans are, are anywhere from about 150,000 up to $5 million. So just to give you a sense of yeah. size of loan, that might be helpful. But I would say it's really just knowing the right tool. So, you know, when you look in that toolbox, identifying the right tool, given, you know, the maturity of your business, your personal financial situation, and also, um, taking on whether it makes sense for you and doing this assessment of taking on debt versus taking on a partner, whether that be through a venture capital or another partnership, really looking at the, the long-term benefits as well as you know, possible um, costs to that decision. So you know, really just kind of weighing all those options and working through that. I think when you're in startup mode, that's a, a critical piece in identifying strategically what your next move might be. That's a, that's a great answer. So thank you so much. Um, so seeing no questions in Q&A, that'll be all that we do for today. So thank you to Candace Caruso and to Wispus Bank um, for, for working with us today and, and teaching us all a little bit about um, some of the areas of opportunity there. Um, and this, is, uh, this has been Dan Young from Startup Crime Wilmington. Thank you for your time. And we look forward to seeing you at our next podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.